In our continuing series, we're looking at examples of VLOOKUP alternatives. Today, we're going to challenge ourselves by using tables, data models, and power pivot in Excel. Everyone, welcome to Excel Level Up, where our goal is to advance your Excel knowledge by improving your efficiency and hopefully progressing your career. Using tables, data models, and a few new pivot table tricks, we will transform rows and rows of transactional data into an information dashboard such as the following. I learned a few new skills in creating this video, so I can't wait to share. Let's get started. In our example today, my boss just emailed over a spreadsheet and asked me to perform an analysis over the last three months of sales data. He's not entirely sure what he's looking for, so I was asked to provide several summaries. It's one of those tasks where you don't always know where you're going to end up, so we need to be very flexible with what we return back to him. So let's take a look at the data here. Tab 1 contains the base sales data. It's relatively simplistic. It's about a thousand rows of data, so it's no, by no means a small amount of data, but you know, it's manageable. So let's take a look at the different data elements. So let's look at column A starts with the sales ID indicating a unique sales transaction. Then as we go over the columns, we have the date of the sales, the amount of the sales, a customer ID and a department ID. For this last one, this could be an example. Maybe we want to track what department within a customer we're selling it to, the financial department, the sales department, marketing, etc. So therefore it's a way for us to just kind of internally understand what departments are buying our products. Now this is a nice set of data, but it doesn't tell us everything. So let's kind of keep continuing and we'll learn more about the data that we have. So on tab two is the customer tab. And here now we're starting to see a little bit better picture of our sales data. So once again, now we're seeing that customer ID again, and that's gonna be important later on. And then we see the name of the customer, what industry they represent. And then we see the state where their headquarters are located in. So that's probably an important data element since we have it here. And maybe we wanna track this for some reason or another. So we'll keep continuing on. And to kind of continue that where the state is, let's say from a sales perspective, we have regions around the country. So for instance, Alabama's in the Southeast, California's in the West, um, Florida's in the Southeast. So here we're listing the 50 states along with Washington DC and what sales region each one is in. So maybe our boss wants to slice and dice this data by sales region. So therefore we need to keep this in mind as well. And then finally, our last tab, our fourth tab, contains that department information that I mentioned, you know, where maybe we sell it to the accounting or the IT or the executive department within a company. So therefore, this, these represent the eight departments that we have here. But we're gonna go back and effectively, I think you're probably understanding that the sales table here of data is kind of like the central table of all the sales and the other ones contain reference data to different IDs sometimes a reference of a reference on here so we're going to need all four components that we're going to want to deliver back to my boss so we'll kind of start with this here now if you work with data like this one you might be thinking that pivot tables are where we want to go and I'm 100% in agreement with that one here that's usually a great place to slice and dice data but normally pivot tables, you, you want to have all the data together. Um, that's usually how a basic pivot table will work. So how can we achieve that? Like if we had all the data on this one tab here, we could easily do a pivot table and look at averages, total sales, the top sales, whatever we want to look at and give all the details about that. But we don't have all the data on this. So how can we actually achieve that? One way is to use something like a VLOOKUP or an XLOOKUP to bring data from one tab over to another one. So for instance, if we were curious here, we have on this first row, sales ID 1001, it says that customer ID 20. Well, how can we determine who customer ID 20 is? Maybe that's necessary for the pivot table. Well, if we were using a VLOOKUP, we can actually build a really quick formula here where we're gonna highlight this one, go over here and bring in the customer name. Looks like it's column two. Let's do an exact match. And right away, we see that customer ID 20 is Elevance Health, but we don't really know what industry they're in. So I'd have to do another VLOOKUP table to bring over their industry. 
and then another VLOOKUP formula to bring over what state they're in, and then another one for sales regions, another one for department. And I'm almost like losing my breath here thinking about how many VLOOKUPs I have to be doing for every single row. So I really don't want to be building five or six VLOOKUPs. So what can we do now to, in a sense, bring all this data together so we can kind of create a master pivot table that gives us any and everything that we want. So let's delete this VLOOKUP and come up with another solution. So what we're going to be doing today is actually creating and joining tables within Excel and then put them into a pivot table that we can slice and dice in all these different ways. If you've used tables and relationships or queries in Microsoft Access, this is gonna look extremely familiar for you. So I think you'll get this really well. But if you haven't seen it, that's perfectly okay. Go through this, you might have to rewind a couple times or back up, um, you're gonna get this really easy process to do. So our first step is we need to define our tables. So if you haven't actually built a table before in Excel, it's very simple, like almost everything, and guess what, it uses a shortcut. So anywhere in the sales table here, I'm gonna hold down the control key and hit the letter T for table. And when I do that, it's gonna pop up a box down at the lower center here that says create table. It's gonna automatically discover what the range will be. Um, it's not a bad idea sometimes to validate that, but I can see that it's correct. I knew I had 1,001 rows here. And it also, I leave that I check where it says my table has headers because I have headers at the top. So I wanna keep those and that's what it's gonna be naming all of the columns in my table. So I'm gonna hit okay. And right away, you're gonna see all the colors change in here. So it kind of defines and it shows me what everything, all that this is the, where the table is. Now, what it also, it's important for this is it gives it a table name up here in the upper left. Now, table one is, fully sufficient, but that doesn't give me much information. I'm not gonna remember what table one is, so it's always good to kind of give it a good friendly name. Like since this is sales data, I'm gonna be very original, I'm gonna call it sales. So you just type that in in the table name and hit the enter key, and it's gonna rename this data sales. That's gonna make life a lot easier a few steps down the road. Now we're gonna go over to the customers tab and do the exact same formula. Click anywhere in the data. I'm gonna hold down the control key and hit the letter T so shortcut control T, and it's gonna once again ask me to create the table. It's now defined all of one, 99 um, customers that I have here, but it's 100 rows of data, including the header. I'm gonna hit the OK button, leaving the My Table Has Headers checked. And once again, I get the completely unoriginal name of Table 2, but since this is customers, hey, once again, we're gonna be consistent and we're gonna call it customers as well. Now you can't repeat a table name. So if you have different names, you sometimes, if you have similar data, you might have to call it something different, but that's not gonna be a problem for us today. So I type in customers and hit enter, and now it's renamed those. Now what I could do is continue this process for sales region and department, but we're gonna come back and do that. Once again, we're gonna keep building upon what we're working on here. So now that we've defined the tables, the next step is we have to define the relationship between the sales table and the customer's table. So how do we do that? And that's where now we're gonna take into a step. You probably haven't used this very often or maybe you haven't used it before. There's a power pivot menu here in Excel. When we click on that, we have very few options and one of them says add to data model. So we need to add each table to the data model and then define that relationship. So we can start with either table since we're on customers. Let's start here. Um, I'm gonna click on add to data model. And it's gonna open up this other window here. Let me drag it over a little bit so we can see it. And now I see that this is all of my customer data. So it has all the customer ID, the name, the industry, and the headquarters. Looks perfect right here. Um, done with this one, so I'm gonna X out of this. Now I'm gonna go over to the sales table and perform the exact same step. So I'm still on the power pivot menu. If I wasn't, I could click on that. And I need to hit add to data model. It's gonna be smart, it's gonna know what the table I'm in here. And it's gonna bring in a second one here. So now we can see the sales table has been brought over. So we can see we have the sales table down here as its tab in power pivot, as well as customers. Then what I need to do now is define the relationship. So the way I do that is you'll see up here in the upper right, a diagram view. And this is where this starts to look very similar to Microsoft Access for this. And now I'm only seeing the tables 
and the column names. And now I have to define how these two are linked together. And right here, it's very easy. So I'm going to take the customer ID and I click on that with my mouse. And then I'm just gonna drag this up to the customer ID in the customer table. So I'm basically drawing a line between two customer IDs and it's going to be smart enough to build a relationship here. Now, it won't get too detailed, but you'll see like a number one and then an asterisk. That defines a one-to-many relationship. So there's every customer is only in the customer table once, but a customer could be in the sales table more than one time. So that's why it's a one-to-many relationship. Now, these columns don't have to be named the same. I did it for simplicity, but many times you'll know they're different. So that's why you have to know your data when you get to this point right here. So now we're ready to create a pivot table. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll see handily it says right up here, pivot table. So I'm just gonna click on this right here and it's gonna start asking me where I wanna put the pivot table. Let's add it to a new spreadsheet or a new worksheet, new tab. And now you're gonna see something very familiar if you're used to working with pivot tables. You see the data where the report is gonna be on the left and then how we define the fields is over here on the left. And you'll see instead of just one element, we're gonna see two. We're gonna see all the customer information as well as all the sales information here. So now we can actually start combining this data without having them on the same tab like you do with normal pivot tables. So whenever I look at something like this, how do I build a pivot table? Normally I care about what's the main thing I wanna report on. In this example, let's say it's sales amount. So I'm gonna vote Let's uh, report on total sales amounts. I'm gonna drag this down to the values. And right away now it's showing me here how much sales I have for the month or the three months. Um, I'm summing this right here. Let's see, it says sum of sales amount. We could also do average, min, max, whatever you do. But we're gonna do simple, we're just gonna add it up. So sum. Um, I like seeing commas and dollar signs. So I'm gonna go back to the home key. Let's format this right, right now. And I'll hit the dollar sign. Let's get rid of the pennies. So right here, $62 million in sales over the last three months. So high amount of sales. But now we wanna see some other information, like maybe we wanna add this or look at it at the name of the actual um, customer. So I'm just gonna drag the name down to the rows and now it's gonna break it out and say for every single customer, this is what the total is. That's nice. You know, I mean, it's good to see kind of the total there, but maybe we wanna sum this up a little bit higher. So let's actually remove the name and instead now, perhaps we wanna look at industry, kind of sum it up a little bit differently. So now we're starting to slice and dice this data in pretty interesting ways. So we can now see about how much we sold for aerospace, 1.4 million, financial, 1.2 million, et cetera, health, 575,000. So it's a way now we're starting to give my boss a little bit better way to look and slice and dice this data. And another way actually, if we wanted to, is let's look at the headquarters. So what state did we sell everything in? Now we're seeing this, but remember, we actually like to report by um, region. So it's not really telling us what region is here. So how do we go back now and add the region? So that's what we want to do next. So let's go ahead and remove the headquarters for right this minute. And we'll kind of close these down just for simplicity's sake, but we'll come back. So now let's go back to the sales region. And remember before, when we want to look into um, adding this table into the data model, we first have to define it as a table. So we're back in here, we're gonna do Control T to create a table. It's gonna highlight everything. Look, this time for some reason it didn't recognize my table had headers, so I wanna check out this box and hit OK. And then once again, remember, we wanna rename the table. So let's just call this Regions. And we define that now. And since we're here, let's go ahead and do Department as well. It's gonna be a very simple one, so Control T. Um, we're gonna, it's all highlighted, we hit OK, and we'll just call this departments as an abbreviation. And now we need to pull these into the data model just like we did the first one. So since we're in here right now, we we'll go to Power Pivot, Add to Data Model. It's gonna add that one. We'll go and close this down. And then we'll do the same with the sales regions because we haven't added that to the data model yet. So we'll click on anywhere in the table, hit Add to Data Model. And now it's gonna be taking this back. If it's smart, we'll go back to the diagram view. So we have all, now we're in the power pivot window. We'll go back to diagram view. And now we're gonna see all of these other tables that we added right here. 
So now we need to build more relationships between all of the different tables. So let's look at regions first. So here we have the state and the sales region. If we look up here, we called it headquarters. So let's now drag state to the headquarters because that's where we named it. So once again, like I said earlier, they don't have to be called the same. And I'm gonna drop that and it's gonna build a one-to-many relationship. The state's only listed in the region once, but the state can be in the customers multiple times since our customers can be many customers across the entire country. And now we're going to have the department ID and we're gonna drag and drop this up here to the department ID up in the sales department. And once again, it's gonna build a one-to-many relationship, not that that's important for this. And now we have all the relationships defined. This screen right here allows you to drag and drop where you position this does not matter. It's really however you wanna position it. However, you might wanna make it as less complicated as possible. So don't worry about this. Free form, drag and drop right here. So anyway, now when we do this and go back over to the pivot table, if it worked right, everything should have been added automatically. Let's take a look, yeah. Now if we look over here in the pivot table fields, we can see that department has automatically been added and region has been added as well. So at this point in time, if I want to, I can drag and drop the sales region in here and now it's gonna summarize by region where I actually made my sales at this point in time. So now this is where I have the pivot table for my boss. If I want to, I can send this over to him and that he can do what he wants with this one. But we can do a few extra things that make it look a little bit better than it currently does right here. So let's kind of drag this over here and we'll take this field right here. And we're gonna bring in, let's say the customer name. So let's bring the customer name in here. So therefore we can see the detail of how much we sold to each customer over this period. But what if I want to filter by different areas or different like industries or what region or what state it's in? Well, obviously, if you know power um, or any pivot table has this filter function right here where you, let's say you can drag down industry right here and then you have industry and all and you can select this. Um, I actually dislike this intensely. I don't think it's very intuitive. It's, um, you can select multiple, but it actually starts to require that you understand pivot tables. And our audience doesn't always understand pivot tables. So I'm gonna recommend that you don't use this filter. Instead, what I recommend you use is when you go up to the analyze um, menu item under the pivot table tools, you're gonna see a um, insert slicer. So that's what we wanna do here. So let's insert a slicer. And that's where now we're gonna start picking fields that we wanna use as a filter. We might be interested in picking the industry. Let's pick the sales region. And since we're here, let's go ahead and pick the state. And we'll slide down and actually pick the, let me just go with this right now. Or actually, I was looking for department since we haven't selected that one. Let's come down here, we'll pick department name under the all tab. And when I hit okay, it's going to create these other windows here that you'll actually start, these are called slicers if you're not familiar with these, and these effectively act as a real-time filter. And you can move these around however you want to. And then by doing this, it changes the data on the power pivot table. So for instance, let's say I wanna see about wherever I sold my product to any marketing department. So I just click on marketing, and it's going to filter down right away only where I sold it to marketing or maybe the executive department. It's going to change these values over on the right hand side for each company that I have in here. Or maybe I only want to see the South region. So let's only look at the companies that are in the South. And then maybe I'm only interested in the South and the health industry ones. And I see right here McKesson Corporation is the only one that meets that definition right there. So right away, and I can go ahead and take these filters off now, but by putting these filters on here and delivering this to my boss, it gives him all the options on what he wants to see right here. So it's a very powerful way through the tables that we created, and then ultimately bring it into a pivot table, and then finally adding some nice touches like slicers that we can actually define where and how the data should look for his analytics. Anyway, 
Appreciate if you've gotten here. Thank you very much. I would love it if you gave this a thumbs up. And if you like this content, hit subscribe more to see more content. And I have, hope you have a great day.